item, I now give the floor to the representative of Syrian Arab Republic. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to extend my thanks and appreciation to the Chinese presidency for the wise conduct of the Security Council's work during this month, which witnessed extremely dangerous developments in the occupied Palestinian territories as a result of the continuous Israeli attacks on the Palestinian people. This has once again revealed the double standards and political hypocrisy practiced by the Western permanent members of this council in speaking about humanitarian conditions, international law, international humanitarian law, and human rights instruments. Mr. President, we in Syria are witnessing on a daily basis the repercussions of the aggressive policies of the United States and some of its Western allies ever since they began to inflame and prolong the crisis in my country. These countries first ignored the growing threat of terrorist organizations and covered up their crimes then, they imposed unilateral coercive measures as a tool of economic terrorism and created pretexts for the crimes of the so-called illegal international coalition through a distorted interpretation of the United Nations Charter, leading to the silence about the American occupation of the northeast of my country and a tenth region and the Turkish occupation of parts in the north and northwest of Syria, let alone the continuation of Israel's occupation and aggression on the sovereignty of the Syrian territories and ensuring its impunity. These aggressive policies of those Western countries and this shameful silence about them encouraged Erdogan's regime to continue committing his crimes against the Syrian people, including by using water as a weapon of war against civilians. Not only were the Turkish regime and its terrorist tools not satisfied with cutting drinking water from a Luke station 23 times, therefore depriving our people of al Hazaka city and its environs of this water, but they deliberately endangered the water reserve in Syria by blocking the flow of water from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers at the Syrian-Turkish borders, which led to a significant decline in the rate of water flowing into the river from 500 cubic meters per second to about 249 cubic meters per second that is less than half and resulted in decrease of the Euphrates level by approximately 5.5 meters. This is a clear violation of the relevant bilateral agreements concluded between the two countries which seriously affects the supply of potable water and irrigation water necessary for producing crops in the governed rates of Aleppo, Raqqa, Deir Zor, and their vicinity. This also limits the generation of electric power from the plants built there, in addition to its catastrophic impacts on brotherly Iraq. Moreover, Erdogan's regime continues to build two additional dams, therefore raising the number of dams built by Turkey since 1970 to seven dams, another serious violation of bilateral agreements 
including the technical and economic cooperation protocol signed between Syria and Turkey in 1987 which is deposited with the United Nations Office of Legal Affairs, as well as the Convention on Non-Navigational Uses of International Water Courses and other treaties related to international rivers. These practices of the Turkish regime led to the deterioration in the humanitarian and living conditions of millions of Syrians, and increase the burdens that the Syrian government and its partners face to improve the humanitarian situation in all areas where Syrians' lives depend on water supplies from Tigris and Euphrates rivers. We call on the member states of the Security Council, especially those countries that boast about their concern of humanitarian issues, to move urgently to pressure their Turkish ally to neutralize international waters from political differences to repump water to its normal level in accordance with the agreements in force and to prevent the use of water as a weapon of war against civilians. Mr. President, some colleagues of the Security Council members are still referring in their statements to the issue of extending the cross-border mechanism for the delivery of humanitarian assistance. In this context, my delegation reiterates its position regarding this politicized mechanism, which the past years revealed its grave flaws, both in terms of its violation of the Syrian sovereignty and its service to the interests of the Turkish occupation and the affiliated terrorist organizations, for most of which is Hayat Tahrir Asham and Jabhat al Nusra, that control Idlib, as well as the flaws associated with the monitoring, distribution, and final destination of assistance. We also reiterate that the mechanism for the delivery of assistance from inside Syria is the best and most consistent mechanism with international law for the delivery of assistance, and that the Syrian government provides all facilities for the United Nations to operate. We recall here the approval by the government of Syria to the convoy heading to Atarib in the northwest 13 months ago, while Ocha is still unable to obtain the approval of the Turkish occupation and its minion terrorist organizations, so this convoy could proceed. The same applies to the convoy heading to Sarmada. Mr. President, in the context of fulfilling the constitutional entitlement of holding the presidential elections, our embassies and diplomatic missions abroad witnessed on May 20th an unprecedented turnout of Syrians residing outside Syria to cast their votes and choose their candidate from among the three candidates who fulfilled the constitutional requirements to run for the election. Today, polling stations in all the Syrian governorates witnessed a mass turnout of millions of Syrians to participate in these elections. Fulfilling this important constitutional entitlement means preserving the sovereignty of the Syrian Arab Republic, its territorial integrity and political independence, which is the principle by which all relevant Security Council resolutions have been initiated and is the cornerstone for any effort or solution to the crisis in Syria. Holding these presidential elections on time ensures the preservation of state institutions and the regularity of their work 
and to contribute to restoring security and stability and overcoming the effects of the terrorist war that the country has lived through over the past 10 years, as well as the huge participation of the Syrians in those elections abroad and at home, carries several important messages. The Syrian people, through this process, affirms affirm their adherence to the independence of their homeland and its unity. It affirms the rejection of the people of any pressure or blackmail. The economic terrorism imposed on them will not prevent them from making their own future and choosing whoever represents them by their free will. as well as expressing the rejection of all external attempts to disrupt and prevent the holding of elections in some Western countries. These important messages by the Syrian people proves that no one can undermine the free and independent Syrians' decision to support their motherland. All plots aimed at targeting the unity, independence, and the territorial integrity of Syria have fallen before the will of the Syrian people to stand fast and defend their homeland and their insistence on exercising their electoral right in full view of the world. That is why we call on some countries to hear and see what the Syrians expressed during those elections, to respect the will of the Syrian people to put an end to their aggressive policies, to stop imposing dictations and set conditions, and to support the efforts of the Syrian state and its institutions to overcome the crisis and restore security and stability to all the Syrian territories. Isn't that a shame for some countries that claim being democratic to prevent Syrians from going to their embassies to perform their national duty under false and illegal pretexts aiming at serving these countries' plots and covering up their failure to achieve their aggressive goals in Syria? Is it not a shame that some in Europe resort to threatening Syrians who go to the polls with expulsion and prosecution and issuing empty statements against the elections and their illegitimacy? We are accustomed to this kind of blubber and the Syrian people will not listen to it and will not and will continue their march towards eliminating terrorism and putting an end to external interference in their internal affairs. Mr. President, the Syrian government continues to follow the efforts of Special Envoy Geir Pedersen and renews its commitment to a political process Syrian-owned and Syrian-led political process and its positive constructive engagement to facilitate the holding of the sixth round of Constitutional Committee. We look forward to convening this round soon. In this context, the Syrian government stresses the need for full respect for the Committee's terms of reference and rules of procedure and not to interfere in its work or try to impose conclusions or unrealistic timetables. Thank you, Mr. President.